Here's another problem. Notice that in this problem we've been told the y component. The y component is negative 5. And then there's two questions. Uh, one question is to find the x component, and the other question is to find the overall vector. Please pause the video and give that a shot. Did you begin by writing down the positive directions? Please begin by writing down the positive directions. That's a really important habit. Then we can put an asterisk in to indicate that we were given uh, this number and that we're focusing on this angle. Let's label the hypotenuse and the adjacent side and the opposite side. This horizontal side is opposite to the 60 degree angle, and this adjacent side is um, adjacent to, the vertical side is adjacent to the 60 degree angle. Uh, of course, it would be perfectly possible to solve this problem using the 30 degree angle down here, but that's not the way it would conventionally be done. Usually, we use the angle that was actually given to us in the problem, so that's how we'll solve the problem. Okay, well, we've got to find the overall vector, and we've got to find the x component. We can do those in whichever order we like. We can attack these in whichever order we like. Now, which trig functions should we use here? Well, one thing that should be really apparent is that we should only use trig functions that refer to the adjacent side. We should only use trig functions that refer to the adjacent side, because that's the only side that we know. We've got to use the number that we know. Remember, we use this asterisk to indicate we know this. So we better refer use trig functions that refer to the adjacent side. Well, tangent and cosine. It's not going to be too helpful to use the sine because that doesn't refer to the adjacent side. We never get a chance to use this negative, uh, we're never going to get a chance to use this 5 number if we use the sine. Um, so use trig functions that make sense based on the information that you've been given. Here we've been given this adjacent side, so these are the trig functions that make sense. Since we have to find two different sides, it's not surprising that we can use two different trig functions. Since we need two different sides, we probably need two different trig functions. We can start with whichever one we want, cosine or tangent. I feel like starting with the cosine. Cosine of 60 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the fraction here first by cross multiplying. 1 times the adjacent side is the adjacent sign, and then we have the hypotenuse times the cosine of 60. Now the adjacent side here is this 5. We're not going to plug in negative 5, because remember that this here is trigonometry. Geometry, it refers to lengths, which are always positive. So even though the sine component is negative 5, when we're working with the trig, we just use the magnitude. Our hypotenuse here is f. We don't know what f is, so we have to plug that in as a variable. Still, we have the cosine 60 term. 5 equals f times cosine 60. Now, we're trying to figure f out, which means we have to get f by itself in this equation, which means we've got to get rid of this cosine 60 on the right-hand side by doing the opposite. The cosine 60 is attached to the f by multiplication. The opposite of multiplication is division. If we're going to divide one side, we have to divide both sides. 5 divided by cosine 60. It appears that that is 10. I think that's exactly 10. So f equals 10. Now remember, this is the overall vector. So we would not put a sign on it. It just has a magnitude. f equals 10. Remember that for the overall vector, you can either use f or f with a dot. We don't need to be so careful here. We don't need two different symbols because there is no sign to overall vector. So we can use um, the same symbol for uh, the magnitude, either f or f with a dot. Now, we're only halfway done because we are also expecting to get the opposite side. Well, it's not surprising that we're not done because we only used the cosine so far. Now we have to go on and use the tangent. Remember, our 
plan was to use the cosine and then the tangent. Now, at this point, we could use the sine. At this point, we could use the sine because now we know the hypotenuse. Now that we know the hypotenuse, we, hypotenuse, we could use the sine. But as I've already mentioned many times in these videos, conventionally, we usually try to figure out each side just based on the sides we were originally given. Originally, we were given the adjacent side, not the hypotenuse. So we're going to try to figure out the opposite side using the adjacent side, not using the hypotenuse, even though it would be perfectly legal to use the hypotenuse. So the tangent of 60 is TOA, opposite over adjacent. Let's cross multiply. Uh, 1 times the opposite side is the opposite side. And then we have the length of the adjacent side times the tangent of 60. Uh, the opposite side is f sub x. But I hope you plugged in f sub x with a dot, because now we're dealing with trigonometry. And trigonometry only gives us magnitudes, not sines. Uh, the adjacent side is length 5, not negative 5. Again, trigonometry just deals with magnitudes. All right, and that worked out nicely. It turns out we don't need to do any algebra here. This is already solved for the unknown. So we just need to get our calculator and do that the magnitude of f sub x is 5 times this tangent of 60. 5 times the tangent of 60. f sub x, this is still just the magnitude with a dot, is 8.7. I'm not going to put a sign here because this is just the magnitude. The trig function doesn't tell me the sign. But I'm not done until I figure out the signed component. The question was asking for the signed component without the dot. Let's see. Well, the x component was pointing to the right, and, uh, well, I should say the positive x direction is to the right, and here we have that the x component is to the right. Positive is to the right, the x component is to the right, so our x component is positive. The x component is positive 8.7. If this was your answer, you got the problem wrong. If this was your answer, you got the problem wrong because you left out the sign. The x component is not 8.7. It's positive 8.7. So this is wrong. When you're just referring to the magnitude, you can say that that's just 8.7, but you're not done until you've given the signed component, which includes the positive sign. All right, so again, um, the way this fits into the series of videos is um, we did a bunch of problems where you were given the overall vector and had to break it into components. That's the typical type of problem in physics, but I wanted to give you some other problems that were a little bit different because you should also know how to solve these. These could come up and you should really know how to do these. Um, so these were problems where you were given a component and asked for something else. So again, usually you're given the overall vector and asked to find um, both components. But you might be given one component and one angle, and then you should be able to find the other stuff. Here we were given the y component and one angle, one side and one angle. Anytime you're given one side and one angle, you can use similar approaches to find everything else out about the triangle. Okay, um, well as usual, if this problem gave you difficulty, redo it. Uh, if any of the previous series of problems gave you difficulty, go back and redo the previous series of problems. Keep redoing the problems in these videos until they're boringly easy for you. This is the foundation of your physics course. This is stuff that has to be boringly easy for you throughout the course, um, or you're going to be falling behind on the more difficult uh, problems. So I've been giving you lots of examples, uh, but uh, maybe I still haven't given you enough examples. Uh, if necessary, redo these examples or find more examples in your textbook. Keep doing these until you have a high confidence level and low error uh, level on these problems.